Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and this is my 1995 Ford Mustang that I used to drift. Here is my RB26 that I will be putting in my Ford Mustang. And I have a Shiba, and another Shiba. No, 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 don't, don't be scared of me, I love you. Anyways, what's up guys, I wanted to give a, a perception using the POV and everything. Uh, I'm going to be cleaning up the LS today. I'm going to have the garage doors open in a bit for Rachel to clean this while I uh, take apart this stuff. Because like I said, I was going to take apart the brake stuff and all the lines. These are the things I told you about in uh, yesterday's video, the plates they came today. Uh, these actually sit right there and they're just strut tower plates that weld in for extra reinforcement. I'm actually going to take off right now the idler pulley which is broken and then I'm going to take off the water pump which the idler pulley sits on technically. Um, just because this water pump if you can see, you can see how much like this is all like orange and like ugly and the other water pump that I have on the shelf over there is mitt. So that's what I'm going to do. As you guys can see, there's no thermostat in here. Which, if you know what a thermostat is, that basically, uh, oh, it's like a, it's basically a, a bit that uh, closes, and once it gets to about 170 degrees Fahrenheit-ish, it usually opens, and it helps the coolant flow afterwards. But what people do on race cars is they just totally remove them, especially for, especially for a place like Arizona where uh, it's always hot, especially if you're racing cars don't really need one because once you fully remove it, it just totally helps you with um, the flow of the coolant. There we go. Not expect the water pump to take. Ooh. Right. Stop leaking. There you go. Leak here. Mm, yes. Mm, yes, liquid. Well, anyway. Why are you so loud? You're like a damn bell. This is the old water pump. These are the two gaskets I actually ordered. Um, yeah, this thing was like used onto the block. Not literally, but as you saw, I took a hammer to take off, which I did not expect at all. Uh, I'm probably going to have to take a razor blade and uh, scrape off all this old gasket before the new one goes on, but I wasn't going to put it on today anyway. But uh, a little bit more open on the engine. So weirdly enough, this guy who originally built this, uh, not the guy who I got this from, this, um, if you don't know, in Arizona out here, they, they put these big LSs into like these off-road rigs and stuff, and he said this was only used twice. And uh, the guy built it, and this build cost probably like over 10 grand, you know, back in the day, you know, four or five years ago. Uh, now LS stuff is getting even cheaper to build performance motors, which is a great thing, hence why I went with this engine. But my point is they powder coated it, this off-white, like it's like cream, like it's almost like Adam LZ's 240, like it's literally a cream, and this is powder coating, which means it's kind of, I, I think you have to sandblast it before you take it paint it or I don't know if you can sand it uh, if anyone can comment below and tell me if you can just sand and paint over powder coating I don't think you can but anyways point being kind of ugly I mean it is dirty but then again I, I would like to just paint all this black but with black you don't see leaks and stuff like that so that's another thing uh, but the valve covers I do want it to match the gold and John player livery but uh yeah this is the engine you guys can see I'm probably gonna have Rachel come here and uh, I got a ton of brake cleaning you know only the best and literally if you just like you can literally use this stuff just to like keep
cleaning and just keep wiping it. It's like the nicest, easiest thing ever to clean is using brake cleaner. So all you gotta do is spray a little bit. And yeah, and see how, uh, how good we can get this to look, I guess. That would be my main question. And the good thing is even if you get into like the ports or anything like that, it doesn't matter because this stuff evaporates. But yeah, point is just to make this engine shine. As you can see, these aren't really gonna be needed at all because like I said, there's gonna be a braided line that runs to here and then another braided line that connects to that to go to the actual caliper. And uh, by the way, a lot of you ask about the Brembo brakes. Uh, if you guys remember, I actually did say I did get the Brembo brakes or I ordered them. A lot of you are hyped. Um, sorry to inform you, but that was kind of a joke and I will explain in a second here. It's the header. I think this is the bin. Uh, yeah, this is a. Uh, I mean, these things are totally gone now, but this is what I meant. <laughs> uh, I was actually literally gonna do like a troll video of me getting the brakes and just being like, yo, like, check out my Brembo's, bro. Um, but I, I was too lazy to do it. And uh, there's some other stuff going on with the car, so I didn't feel like taking off the wheels and learning how to put on these plastic things that are like $20. Um, so yeah, so, sorry about that guys, hope you guys aren't pissed at me for that. Um, but, uh, until I get a brake sponsor of some kind, uh, which I have been in a contact with a few, I'm probably just gonna switch to race compad rotor and race compound pads. And they should be good enough, because we're not doing any kind of racing where it's non-stop racing for like 40 plus minutes. Uh, most track days you only go out on the track for a session of like 20 to 30 minutes and most time attack events you only go out for a few laps and one of those laps has to be like your main time lap so just doing race compound on stock m3 brakes is going to be more than enough because um, if you don't know the big brembo the big brake kits themselves they're mainly for temperature control not so much for stopping power uh, more does not mean better stopping power with brakes uh, I mean, M3 brakes are actually really great. It's just the thing is they get hot over time. So if you're doing con consistent hot laps and stuff, they get really hot and the brake pedal starts to get squishy and overall you will lose the full stopping power potential out of the brake. So that's the point of big brake kits. For now, we do not need that. Uh, so I'm just gonna skip that for now just cause it is a really expensive item as well. And there's already enough things that I'm trying to do. to hammer this one on. That's a circle piece. Giant assembly too, if you want. Actually, it, it doesn't look bad, honestly. 
once you clean it. Because it doesn't look cream at this point. It just looks white. What do you think? It's an off white. But it's not cream. I don't know. You say I don't know color. Big mood. There we go. Stupid DME box. Out. Okay guys, so uh, the GoPro kind of ran out of battery, but as you can see in that pile over there, which I just removed, is all the brake lines and the ABS. The master, the, 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 bro, sorry, the vacuum assisted brake chunk that sat there, all the lines that ran across here and into the ABS module. As you can see, just the rear lines are open right there and that's where the bit is going to connect to. Um, but yeah, this is all cleaned up. Uh, probably tomorrow, because Rachel has work, I'm gonna try to get a pinch weld thingy. And uh, you see like these, th this metal like heat shield that runs along here and up there, and then the one right here. I'm gonna focus on getting all that out because I'm gonna need it gone to put the top hat plates on and to weld them on. So it'll be just cleaning up the engine bay, and continue removing unnecessary stuff. Rachel and I, on the other hand, did an amazing job. Um, as you saw, I took off the water pump, but she did an amazing job cleaning up the engine. It doesn't even look that bad, honestly, the powder coating color. But I definitely am going to do the valve covers, the um, the gold that we talked about. That's pretty pretty good looking. So you can see over there is the AM lines that run to that oil cooler on the ground that's going to be mounted in front of the radiator. And uh, yeah, this is the giant chunk, probably another 30 pounds to 40 pounds gone. So, yeah, I took, a, I took the seat out as well just to get to everything down there to disconnect the brake pedal. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys are liking the progress. I know it's a little slow for now, but like I said, it'll pick up in a week or two once I have more money coming in and I can get a welder and such and do more stuff. Right now it's just like the tedious stuff that I don't want to do, but... Anyways, thanks so much for watching guys, uh, and I'll see you on the next video.